Take a good look at him. He's one of the great prizes of American hunting. Came from China in 18 and turned to the Northwest. He's come a long way since then and has moved into almost every northern state. But South Dakota is where he feels most at home. We have what the ring-necked pheasant wants, and he's here in quantity. So are the hunters come pheasant season. From all points of the compass, the hunting clan begins to gather on opening day. From Miami to Seattle, from Hawaii to Maine, they come in private planes, airliners, cars, and buses. This autumn pilgrimage is the highlight of the year for many men. They save their vacations for a get out under the big sky, join in the old personal adventure of man, dog, and gun. Some of these hunters come from Dixie, where there are no pheasants, but many come from other pheasant states. And although the hunting may be pretty good at home, it's not the same as here. When millions of hunters think of pheasants, they think of South Dakota. Why does a man leave home and fly a thousand miles to shoot a wild chicken? Mostly for the hunting, and to try to outsmart one of the trickiest game birds in the world. Partly to see old friends again. And partly to get away from the office and out into the big Dakota fields where he can forget about business and remember what it feels like to walk in the open with a good shotgun in his hands. You can tell that this gentleman is here on business. He has a briefcase. He's here on business, all right, out in the cornfield with a customer named John Q. Ringneck. Most of the pheasant hunters drive here in cars loaded with gun cases, ammunition, hunting coats, boots, and high hope. It's hunting season, and there's a carnival spirit in the air. The welcome at is out. Hunting is one of South Dakota's biggest industries, and some hotels, motels, and restaurants do their biggest business of the year during the pheasant season. It isn't even unusual to find hunting dogs that are hotel guests, although some bellmen never quite get used to the idea. Everywhere you look in the streets, restaurants, and stores of almost every South Dakota town east of the Missouri River, you see the familiar plaid shirts, canvas pants, and hunting caps of the Buckshot Brigade. Come to South Dakota just for the fun of it. Well, they found willing hosts. If it's fun that the boys want, it's fun they're gonna get. But you don't find pheasants in town, not even in South Dakota. You get out into the country after ringnecks, and your chances of finding them are best if you have already lined up a place to hunt and have a farmer friend expecting you. There's good hunting to be had for the asking, and farmers expect to be asked. They permit hunting, but they demand the right to know who's on their land. Hey, this must be the right place. Frank and his two sons have driven a long way for this opening day, and it looks like it'll be worth it. They will be paying guests to the farmer, a board, room, and hunting arrangement that benefits both landowner and sportsman. Three other hunters are already here, being briefed by their farmer host and getting a bad case of pheasant fever. The opening day of the pheasant season in South Dakota is a red-letter day for hunters and farmers alike. There are states where opening day may not cause much fuss, but not here. For hundreds of farm homes, it means a family reunion, with children and grandchildren returning to the old home place for a pheasant hunt with dad, grandpa, or Uncle Fred. Many farmers reserve opening day for old friends who have been hunting together for years and are almost part of the family. Today, we have a young hunter from the new generation taking his place in the company of men. And it's hard to tell who's prouder, the boy or the older hunters who welcome him. Young Tim is lucky. He has a new teacher. Else the farmer is an old hand at pheasant hunting. He knows what it takes to put pheasants on the land and what it takes to put them in the game bag. Come here, Tim. I have some homework for you. Look this over tonight and mind what it says about safe gun handling and how our retrievers will be working the pheasants. Tomorrow we'll be doing our studying outdoors. Tomorrow is a long time away when you're 15 and waiting to go on your first pheasant hunt. 
This isn't just another rabbit hunt. This is a real bird hunt, a man's game played by men's rules. What's going to happen? Will we see pheasants? Will I get a chance to shoot? And will I be able to hit one of those roosters? If I could get a bird or two, what would Dad say? Well, Tim, we'll see. You never know what's going to happen out pheasant hunting. That's what keeps us coming back for more. But one thing we're pretty sure of, knowing young hunters, it's going to be a long, long night. Finally, the great day. Clear and cool with just enough dampness to help the retrievers smell birds. And right after breakfast, Tim gets a quick refresher course in wing shooting from the old master. Best practice in the world. That's a little better, son, but get out ahead of it. Swing that gun. That's the way. Now you've got the idea. Reckon you can do that on pheasants? Okay, Tim. Let's turn the clay birds over to these old duffers. A little practice won't hurt them either. There are a couple of things I want to show you about pheasants, and we can't start hunting for a couple of hours yet anyway. This is one of the reasons that Els has good pheasant hunting on his place. Plenty of nesting and brood cover for the hens. Without good nesting cover, there can be no pheasant hunting, for it's impossible to harvest a crop if seed can't be planted. Els takes pride in such places. To him, a farm means more than farming. It means knowing the land and what lives there, and keeping an eye on wildlife and helping when he can. Last spring, he knew of eight pheasant nests in this small block of cover. It wasn't just soil bank, it was pheasant bank. And it has paid a lot of interest to Els and his friends. Tim, over here was one of the biggest pheasant nests I've ever seen. It may have been a dump nest where more than one hen laid eggs. And that little hen sure had her work cut out for her. She had 16 eggs in that nest and a dozen of them hatched. I wouldn't be surprised if those are some of the birds that we'll be hunting today. But nesting cover is only part of it. There's another time of year when snow has drifted over the grass cover and weedy fence rows. The pheasant is a pretty rugged old bird, but he's got to have some place to get in out of the weather. Take this old shelter belt of trees and brush. It looks pretty woolly right now, but it's none too thick come February. Game biologists say that birds will travel miles to find cover like this, and I believe it. I've seen 200 pheasants in these trees in a winter evening. It's one of the only places around here where they can find shelter from storms, and I don't know what they would do without it. Well, that's what pheasants need the most, Tim. There are other things, but if they have good nesting cover and some shelter from winter storms, we'll have birds to hunt. You don't get something for nothing, and you can't raise game without cover. But talk won't put pheasants in mother's oven, so let's go hunting. The other hunters are waiting. In fact, they've been waiting for about 10 months. Got everything, boys? If you're not ready now, you never will be. Dogs, lunch, shells, and a hard time for the first guy who misses an easy shot. Have you ever noticed you can always tell experienced shooters by the way they handle guns around cars and trucks? These are safe hunters and good ones with guns unloaded and actions opened. They'll load the guns when they're ready to begin hunting, not before. Else has been saving a special place to start this hunt, a pocket of weedy cover between picked cornfields and fallow land. Pheasants like to loaf there this time of day after feeding in the cornfields. Drop off the hunters, spacing them around the cover. Doesn't hurt to have plenty of men working a place like this. 
Pheasants can play it pretty smart in heavy cover, and it can take a lot of rousting to put them into the air. Pheasants know when they're hidden, and they know when they're not. If they can be seen, they often run for it. But if they're hidden, they like to lie tight. That's one of the reasons for hunting this kind of pheasant country with good retrievers. A retriever can bust through heavy cover like a small truck. And if there are any pheasants around, he'll put them up in the air where you can go to work on them. Okay, let's move into the cover, but uh, take it easy. No, that wasn't a rabbit. There are birds ahead going into the corner toward the fence. There it is, first action of the day. Good shooting, steady. There may be more where these came from. No need to crowd those birds now. Another rooster. Nice shot. One of the best things about retrievers is that they let you do more hunting for birds to shoot and less searching for birds that are down. Watch this. Yan he go, happy and healthy. But our red-eared hunters redeem themselves with another pair of roosters. That's what can happen when there's some good cover left next to the cornfields. If a farmer protects a few places from the cow, the plow, and the match, those places will produce pheasants in the spring and hunting in the fall. Everybody works in this outfit. That's it, spread those birds out on the bed of the truck where they can cool. The quicker that pheasants are cool, the better. Once again, that mark of experience, unloading the gun until it's ready to use again. Now that there are some birds in the hand instead of in the bush, how about some lunch? Frank never gets very far from that chow. time-honored rations of the Midwestern pheasant hunter. A ring of bologna and a chunk of longhorn cheese. Nothing fancy, but it tastes like a banquet when it's eaten out on a fall day and seasoned with laughter, sharp air, and the tang of powder smoke. It's hard to tell who's most interested in all this, some of the dogs or some of the people. But not even food is going to keep Tim from asking questions. And it won't keep Els from answering them. Now's the time for stories, the alibis, the theories, and the advice. This is when the young hunters learn things that they'll never find in books. The old hunting stories told by the men who lived them, passing on traditions that they themselves learned many years ago in places much like this. Are there any lip readers in the house? There aren't? Good. Frank breaks up on that one. When real hunters talk about pheasants and pheasant hunting, you can feel some of their deep respect for this great game bird in the country he lives in. He's a big bird in a big land, and he lives up to his reputation. He's the number one game bird of the northern prairies, a combination of ruggedness, beauty, shrewdness, and good eating. Old Yeller knows all that, and he's heard these stories before. Come on, either feed me or take me hunting, but let's don't just sit. 
It's getting on into the afternoon now, and Els thinks it might be smart to hunt a cornfield. Early in the season, pheasants are likely to be almost anywhere at any time of day. They're pretty well spread around in the cover. But at this time of day, they're likely to begin moving into big, weedy cornfields, especially if those fields have grassy waterways and fence rows and shelter belts of trees. There are different ways of hunting in corn, but the best is the method of drivers and blockers. The blockers walk down the corn rows in an evenly spaced line, moving pheasants out ahead of them. Some birds will flush and others will run. The blockers wait quietly at the end of the field. The pheasants are caught between hammer and anvil. Running ahead of the drivers, the birds are forced to flush at the end of the field by the blockers. Else likes to let the drivers out first. This is a good idea because pheasants seem to quickly sense that there are men in the field. It doesn't make much difference if the birds know the drivers are there, but the presence of blockers should be a military secret. Else is going to drive that truck out of sight. Blockers should be quiet and inconspicuous. And that means keeping cars and trucks away from the end of the field. Pheasants can be touchy about such things. This is ideal cover for blockers, a weedy fence line where the hunters can crouch out of sight but still have plenty of room to swing their guns on overhead birds. The drivers are loading up and getting ready to head down the field. There are only three men here, and that's not enough for a big cornfield. But those two retrievers can be the equal of several men. Better get ready, boys. High brass sixes and a 12-gauge gun, a good combination for cornfield pheasants. The blockers are stationed and waiting with their gun ranges overlapping. And here come the drivers. Fresh pheasant sign. There are birds around here somewhere. Up he goes. A big rooster on a high towering shot. There's another one, Tim, coming toward your ends. Swing that gun. Get out ahead of him. You were behind that bird. You stopped your gun just as you shot. It don't mean a thing if you ain't got that swing. Hen. There's a rooster. Take him. It doesn't pay to hurry when you're driving pheasants. Take it slow. Even with dogs, the hunters were spread quite thin during their drive, and some birds may have run back around the line or through the line without being seen. Many hunters like to have no more than four cornrows between men. You want to cover as much field as possible, but be close enough together so that you won't miss any birds. If drivers zigzag down a field, they can be fairly far apart, maybe as much as 100 feet. But if they walk straight down the corn rows, as most hunters do, they shouldn't be much more than 30 feet apart. Keep those dogs busy. It's work that they like. There's nothing prouder than a good retriever carrying a bird for the boss. Here's the trademark of the main pheasant range. Pheasants and corn like the same kind of country, and they thrive together. In South Dakota, corn may be more than half the annual diet of adult pheasants. You did pretty well today, old dog. You managed to keep out of the cockle burrs, but get into the pheasants. I reckon I'll keep you. We might even try for a few more birds tomorrow. Next day, the hunters try something a little different. A broad stretch of marsh grass on the edge of a prairie lake. Hunting these heavy marsh edges is usually best in early winter when cold winds have driven pheasants out of thinner cover. 
It's a little early in the fall for the best shooting in places like this, but a marsh edge will produce a bird or two any time during the hunting season. Hey, Frankie, we see you're a periscope, but where are you? This isn't easy hunting, but whoever said that pheasant hunting was easy? The hunters who bag the most birds year after year are the guys willing to get into heavy cover and root out their pheasants. You have to hunt ringnecks where they are, not where you want them to be. South Dakota has more pheasants than any other state. But even here, in the pheasant hunter's promised land, you have to earn your birds. Hen bird, let her go! Marsh cover is worth a lot to pheasants. When prairie lakes like this are drained, more than just waterfowl suffer. Pheasants, rabbits, Hungarian partridge, and even deer are left without winter homes. There's the payoff, first bird of the day. That could have been an easy bird to lose without a dog. In pheasant cover like this, a good retriever is almost as necessary as strong legs. The dog will greatly reduce crippling loss. By doing this, he'll give you more birds per hour and more fun per bird. Some of the best places to hunt pheasants are the shelter belts of trees often found between South Dakota fields or beside roads. These are usually outer rows of shrubs and conifers with larger trees running down the middle. Here again, a system of drivers and blockers is used. In big shelter belts, two hunters can zigzag within the cover while two others walk just outside the trees ahead of them. The two blockers are usually located just off the end corners. These men are often the best shots in the group. Be ready for anything in a place like this. A rooster breaks out of the far side and else drops him in the cornfield with a long shot. Those blockers know what they're doing. They stay in position even after they see the drivers. You never know what pheasants will do or where they'll do it. He fell right here. See, was he dead? Sure he was dead. Looked like it anyway. Get those dogs over here. Dead, dead, dead bird. Hunt him up. Look at that, right where we were standing. Else you're a fine shot, but a poor retriever. Sleeping in a warm house has ruined your nose. We're gonna have to keep you outside tonight. Across the road is a bigger shelter belt, and it may have more birds. We'll soon find out. The drivers are on their way, and two of the best shots are in position as blockers. Watch this. One. Two. Three for three. A fine piece of shotgunning. There's good cover at the end of this shelter belt, so there'll probably be some action there. Whenever you can, drive pheasants toward cover. It will usually stop running birds and hold them until you get there. Just like that. Beautiful bird cover. There has to be something in here. Introducing the star of the Weed Patch Olympics. The 
That's one way to do it if you're young, hale, and hearty. But the dogs could have done it easier and better. Tim's ready for action, then here it comes. Get over there, boy. Now you see him, now you don't. Well, Tim, you're not going home empty-handed, but those feathers make mighty thin soup. Our hunters have hit the jackpot in this fine grass and wheat cover. Elf scores with a clean shot. A good pheasant hunter is usually a cool shooter who takes his time on close birds, especially if he's shooting a tightly choked gun. Watch this. That's the way an expert does it. In another corner of the field, Tim comes into his own and shows his dad fancy shooting. Son, that was terrific. As fine a double as I've ever seen. Now it's all over but the remembering and the storytelling. From here on, it's up to the oven and a good cook. But even as the goodbyes are being said, new plans are being made. There'll be another October. There'll be boys wanting to shoot and men wanting to teach them. And if the men are wise and the land is kind, with some sheltered places in winter and some nesting places in spring, there'll be pheasants to hunt.